At nine years old, I desperately wanted a racing bicycle. My father had taken us to Denmark. I got addicted to watching these guys whoosh, 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 everywhere. And I said, I want one of those. Dad said, look, boy, you can have it when you're 21. I didn't understand he couldn't afford it. Today, a Trek bicycle cost $12,000. As far as my dad was concerned, no nine-year-old kid could turn around that amount of money. But that was what I wanted. I dreamt about it. I got the bicycle magazine out of Europe, and I had a picture on the wall, ride a wheel on Sheffield Steel. I didn't know that I was early iteration visualizing to realize, because what you input, image, impress, you're going to express in the screen of your space. Well, I'm a little Boy Scout, and it says on the last page, you could sell greeting cards on consignment. I looked up my little dictionary what consignment was. That means they send me out a sample thing. I go to the neighbor's house. My mother was a great saleswoman. Mom said, smile at all the neighbors. They'll probably buy. And don't ask for one. Ask, would you, I'm earning, just knock at the door. I had a big furry mitt. My older brother give me and go like this. They'll say, come in here, young man. We got to blow your nose. Now I've got a real prospect and said, what are you doing, Mark? I said, I'm earning my own bicycle. Would you like to invest in one box Christmas cards or two? In one month, I sold 376 boxes of Christmas cards, became the number one greeting card salesman in America. Now, fast forward 40 years, same company comes back to me, and uh, we write the Christmas cards, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul Christmas cards. It's one of the big licenses I did, and and we sold them at grocery stores, and we sold 897,000 box Christmas cards. So it's a great thing that I learned how to sell Christmas cards was open to these guys coming to my office once I decided I was going to be the biggest licensing guy ever in the book business. But back to being a kid, I would make potholders at night and sell them to the neighbors. The greeting card deal worked. I, I uh, got a lawnmower. I cut lawns. I shoveled snow. We got. I paid for my own snowblower. I did everything to earn all this money. Now, my dad, in his infinite wisdom, now remember, English was very hard for him to learn because he got here as a semi-adult and he had to go to work immediately. There's no ESL, English is a second language. So he couldn't explain to me that he took half my money, took it down to Little Fort Bank, stashed it and said, boy, this is your college fund. Good idea, good advice, but it now it cuts my earning power in half and I got to earn all that money. And then I found out where bicycles are sold up in Kenosha, Wisconsin, about an hour away. I said, dad, drive me up there. I found the bike I wanted. I had my own money. He did let me buy the bike. And uh, then I'm delivering newspapers in the morning and he would come back from work just to fold papers, put a rubber band around them and, and uh, say, okay, I really admire you being a little businessman because he was the proprietor of a little Danish bakery called Elite Bakery. And that's what he wanted me to take over. I said, dad, I don't know what a white glove guy is, but I'm pretty sure I was. Little did I know by reading those newspapers, delivering those newspapers, I studied journalism and, and all that in high school. Someday I would become world's best-selling author. But all this stuff ties together. But most importantly, I learned how to sell as a nine-year-old by walking in the neighborhood. My parents thought I'd get tired after one block, and I just kept going in bigger and bigger concentric circles until I sold as many as I needed so I could afford to buy the bicycle of my heart's desire.